prove the following statement using induction. We have 5 plus 8 plus 11 up through 3n plus 2 equals n times 3n plus 7 divided by 2. Now, proof by induction, also called a ladder argument. The idea is, how do you climb a ladder? You need to do two things. First, you need to get on the ladder, and then once you're on the ladder, you need to know how to go from one rung to the next. That'll let you get to any rung. Okay, mathematically, we take our statement. Okay, for the statement with the n in it, we're gonna call that pn. If I wanna get on the ladder, that's gonna be the step where we prove the base case. So there we're trying to show p1 is true. In general, you might not wanna start with p1, you could start with p5 or p10, but at the end of your argument, you'll have p5, p6, p7, and on true. So where you start determines how many statements you get true. Next, we have the induction step. So this is going from one rung to the next. So here we're trying to prove, if we know that pn is true, then I also want that pn plus one is also true. For the statement we're working on, we begin by proving the base case. So I wanna show p1 is true. To do that, I just take our statement, wherever I see an n, I put a one. So on the left side, we're gonna get a five, so we're only using the first entry. So on the left, I have five. On the right, we'll have one times 10 divided by two. That also gives me a five. So we get five equals five. P1 is true, and I have my base case. Now, we're gonna show the induction step. So that's gonna be, we need to prove if Pn is true, then we also have Pn plus one is true. We write those down. So we're given this equality here, so that's Pn. I wanna show Pn plus one is true, assuming this. So I write out Pn plus one, okay? The way I'll get that is, I take a look at Pn, where I see an n, I put in an n plus one. So on the left, that's just gonna be putting in one more term. Then on the right, wherever I saw an n here, we put in n plus one. Okay, the way induction arguments usually go, at least for the type we're doing here. We're gonna take one side of Pn plus one, and we're gonna work off of that. So we'll substitute something from Pn, we'll work, and then at some point we'll get stuck. The way you get unstuck is to go to the other side of Pn plus one, and then work your way backwards. Then you usually meet in the middle, okay? For your answer, which you turn in, you just rewrite everything nice, okay? And then it won't be clear that you got stuck at any point, but there's gonna be an unspoken agreement between you and your grader that you did the work somewhere. Okay, in this case, we're not that complicated. So we'll just follow our nose till we get to the end. All right, I write out the left-hand side of Pn plus one. So that's right here. We'll notice if I take all the terms up to 3n plus 2, that's going to be the left-hand side of pn. So I'm going to take what's on the right side of pn and substitute. Now, these two terms, we can combine. When I do that, this is going to collapse to this term here, and then I can factor this. So that's usually going to be the problem when the power of n in the front is pretty high. You're going to have to factor a big polynomial. So, in that case, you just look at your answer and then work your way back to the factorization that you want. But here, we could just take a look and factor, and that's gonna factor into n plus one, three n plus 10, and then I just have to remember to put it in the form of the final statement that I'm trying to get to. So, that shows that our induction step is true, and then putting together the base case and the induction step, that says our statement's true for all n bigger than or equal to one. Okay, bigger than or equal to one because my base case is one. 